Hello, my name is Hannah Nespor. I am the founder, the doula, and the educator behind Transcend Maternal Services. And today we are going to talk about breastfeeding. So this is in no way to mom guilt or mom shame or formula shame, as much as this is an opportunity to start diving into education of breastfeeding. So today we're gonna to talk about breastfeeding rates in the United States, as well as what impacts those uh, numbers. And then we're gonna kind of just do an overview of what my next few videos over the few next couple of weeks are going to look like in regards to breastfeeding for you, for your baby, and for your partner. So let's dive in. So the numbers that we're gonna talk about are breastfeeding um, exclusively, as well as combination feeding between breast milk and formula. So when we look at the number of people that are breastfeeding and it hits 83.2% that have ever breastfed their baby that um, is really a pretty decent number. But when we look at this, this is a number that can vary from a couple days to um, a couple years having ever breastfed. So when we kind of dive into this, now we want to look at the numbers of at three months, six months and a year. When we dive into um, our numbers for combination feeding at six months, there's still 57.6% of babies still receiving breast milk. And then at a year, it drops down to 35.9% of babies still receiving breast milk. When we look at exclusive breastfeeding, these numbers drop a little more. So exclusively breastfed at three months is at 46.9%. And then when we go down to six or up to six months, it drops down to 24.9% of babies that are exclusively breastfed. So what affects these numbers? When we have 83% of babies that are breastfed initially at least, why does this number drop down to 24.9% at six months? And what does this look like for our global health and for our babies and for long-term health for children and long-term health for moms. So let's just look at what affects these numbers. The first one is issues with lactation and the latch. So I'm sure a lot of us have had struggles with this um, with our babies. I know I have, um, but so when we do this, a lot of the time we're not educated enough to seek out the help that we need. A lactation consultant is huge at this point when we are looking at latch issues or expression of milk and not having enough milk is a very, very common concern for moms. And when we start going into this, we kind of get into this panic. So that's one of the impacts of breastfeeding rates going down is when we have those concerns of lactation and of the latch. And that's where we really want to utilize our resources around us, which is why as a doula, I love preparing this with my clients of having those resources on a paper handed to them at prenatals that if there's any concerns, you have all the numbers there. So this is something I really want you to, if you're pregnant and expecting now, to have those resources available before you need them. And hopefully you never need to touch it, but it's there when you do. So for the second reason is concerns with infant nutrition and weight. And this sometimes is a legitimate concern where we have babies that are not gaining. Maybe they're not expressing enough milk or there's other health concerns that are affecting this. But very often we don't give babies that time and to have that curve of weight loss to gain and birth practices and labor can really affect these numbers. And that's something that we need to take into consideration when we move through that. So those are different things and making sure that the baby is being compared to a WHO breastfed baby uh, chart is also important, but these are different things that impact decisions to continue to breastfeed or to switch to formula or to combination feed. Others are um, concerns with medications while breastfeeding, which again, there's wonderful uh, resources with your providers, with a lactation consultant, um, 
Lactmed, L-A-C-T-M-E-D, is a good resource to compare uh, medications and if they are breastfeeding friendly, um, as well as others. So the fourth one is having unsupportive workplace policies or lack of parental leave. So that really can affect um, if you are not being given your rights, which legally you have, to make sure that you are able to pump while you are at your workplace, or if you have inadequate parental leave, that can definitely affect your um, breastfeeding rates of your choosing to, and when you're making that decision of going back to work and choosing to pump and what that looks like for you and your baby's journey. The others are cultural norms and lack of support from friends or family or those in your community um, that you are surrounded by. So this is a huge, huge impact because breastfeeding, though it is natural, it does not always come natural. And it is so very important to make sure that you have a community that is going to support you and to encourage you to do whatever you need to do and to make sure that you have that encouragement coming by you and offering resources and doing what needs to be done to meet your goals. And those goals might change, but making sure that you are encouraged to keep with your goals and that you have the resources around you is so, so important. Um, and that can be hard when there's different cultural norms or you're the first in your family to be breastfeeding or you have an unsupportive spouse or what that looks like. So it's so important to be able to dive into and surround yourself with people that are going to encourage you to breastfeed through any trials that may come. So one of the last reasons and um, things that affect our breastfeeding rates are unsupportive hospital policies and practices. And this can be straight from um, hospital policies of labor progression and interventions that can affect breastfeeding, um, birth practices, as well as immediate postpartum and beyond. Different policies um, when baby is being taken away from you a lot or there's that disconnect and you are being um, kind of uprooted and you are being um, having people in and out consistently that can affect your um, baby and your bonding and breastfeeding rates as well and other policies that we don't have time to get into so there's different things that affect that so over the next few weeks we're going to talk about a lot a lot a lot of things in regards to breastfeeding so we're going to talk about stages of babies and breastfeeding and what that looks like and why it's important to know we're going to talk about latches and holds we're gonna talk about feeding through teething and growth spurts and cluster feeding. We're gonna talk about feeding on demand versus scheduled feeding and how that can affect your supply and how it can affect baby. We're gonna be talking about utilizing your resources um, in your community, mom groups, breastfeeding groups, lactation consultants. Um, and then we're also going to talk about breast milk and the amazing components and just how mind-blowing breast milk really is. We're gonna talk about um, breastfeeding in today's society, anytime, anywhere, in any way that is comfortable for you and for your baby. We're gonna talk about nutrition and how that plays a part or may not play a part as much as you think. And kind of what um, the health benefits, like I said, for yourself, for baby, um, if it is not you breastfeeding, for um, your spouse or your friend who's breastfeeding and just the health benefits on a global scale and for healthcare costs that can be affected by that. We're gonna talk about a little bit about how birth practices can influence and affect uh, breastfeeding rates and also how it can affect your journey the first couple days to first couple weeks as well as if i could just, just scoot this we're going to talk about the benefits of skin to skin we're going to talk about parenting practices and how that affects it supply and how to boost supply what can affect supply negatively we're going to talk about involving dads and partners and talking about baby and child led weaning uh, versus um, parent led weaning and there's so much more to talk about but that's a lot of topics and we're gonna dive into those in the next few weeks. But 
I just really want to just say how awesome it is that you're going to be taking this time to learn about breastfeeding for yourself, for your child, for someone that you're supporting and the amazing benefits of that because every time that we do this, it is starting to take a step in the right direction of normalizing breastfeeding again and really choosing what is best for your baby's health and your health. Um, it is absolutely incredible and there are certain circumstances where breastfeeding is not an option or not the best option for some reasons. Um, but overall, when we talk about breastfeeding, it is one of the best things that you can do for your baby and for your health, short term and long term. And this is where we're going to start off with leading into education and support for that. Again, it looks different for everyone, but every single drop counts. So even if it was one feeding, one day, one week, one month, one year and beyond, you have done awesome. You have done such a great job. So let's continue to support other parents in their journey to get those babies the breast milk that they need.